it's not like a... Sorry, 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 sorry. Let's do the thing right from the thing again. Do the.
Everyone loves a good secret, especially when it's wet. This week on Sing Talk Play, we've got exactly that, the wet secrets, Edmonton's own. Hi, guys. Hi, Rob. Hi. Hi. We are the wet secrets. <laughs> Left to right. And yeah, this sure. is Paul Ernish. And I'm Lyle. I'm Trevor. Emma. Kim. And you guys just put out your third and uh, it was described everywhere everywhere that I went to read about it. It was described as a uh, eagerly awaited. I, I guess the, the break has been about five years or between the records. So, um, and that's a long time in you know the modern the way people consume music now. So, uh, so I'm totally pleased and pleasantly pleased and uh, a little bit surprised. But uh, yeah, I I'm certainly not going to take it for granted. I don't know. We're gonna. We're already kind of starting on the next one, so it's not uh, going to be the same gap. The first two, especially the the second one, got a lot of great reviews and did really, really well, um, being featured on CBC and getting some great things written about it. Is there nerves involved when you're when you're putting out something after having an indie success? It makes you work harder on it, I think, because after five years, you can't just come up with something that's like, mm, yeah, okay, you know, that one's all right. You want to put out something that you're really proud of. So it just made us make sure that we were, which you should always do, you know, <laughs> but this made sure that we were putting out what we felt was our best effort. When we started playing, we felt more like a Calgary band because at that time, like what, 2005, six, seven, there was more of a tradition of Calgary bands dressing in and having a theatrical show at that time. We were completely immersed in Edmonton, so Calgary always seems like this distant jewel. We get to come <laughs> visit and get lost in, even though I've been coming here for 20 years, 25 years. Still don't know where the hell I'm going. Sarcy Trail, where the fuck? <laughs> um, but anyway, yeah, I don't know. Theatrics, sure. It is fun. I mean, th this whole thing is... Uh, it looks fun. It's now kind of um, at the DNA level with this band. I don't think we're ever going to not do this kind of theatrical thing. And at the Edmonton release show, uh, we had a full choir um, wearing choir robes and they were all doing dance moves you guys yeah. tend to do that a lot it seems um expand your on-stage presence the ladies run a little horn orchestra <laughs> <laughs> they are they're taskmasters though they're gonna be humble yeah, about it now but they're like, kind of totally ultimate badasses we cracked when the, the whip last night and we're like okay everybody in the back hallway let's do these parts right now okay again 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 <laughs> <laughs> So. <laughs> it was good. Something like that could get out of control pretty quick. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And like we pulled it together this week. So wow. yeah, we only had, what, three practices with the horns? Yeah, we started on two practices with the horns. Yeah. Yeah. So. I'm sure the people at the, uh, the performance thought that it was something in the make for a month or two, but to know <laughs> that it was just put together <laughs> in a week. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I think it did come together. Again, the, these, uh, the ladies kind of were really adept at kind of whipping everyone into shape and and, and a choir with with robes red and black robes that emma secured and yes. <laughs> okay how is that done like where did you guys get these and the robes like how do you, do you have a supplier do you, do you have a person we have yeah we have we have a supplier <laughs> <laughs> we got um, a who's your man who's your guy i got the choir robes from the high school i went to um which is just north of edmonton and these came from the marching band that i was in in red deer the red deer royals got rid of these excellent marching band outfits and got some of like the new style i don't what? know if you follow marching band fashions no no quite quite a bit yeah <laughs> they've gone downhill in in recent years so we just snapped up these 1970s tinged music man looking things that's amazing right place at the right time scored the look yeah. of uh wet secrets mm -hmm. that's great and as far as the theatricality goes i mean we're not going too far afield they're still we're still like dressing like musicians and choir singers right like it's still a uniform more than a costume but maybe i sound defensive when i say that i should <laughs> keep saying that i think ultimately it's still all about the music you know like if we weren't confident about the music and the albums that we were putting out we might feel uh you know goofy or something wearing these costumes but um i uniforms. feel like uniforms sorry uniforms <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but you know any any anybody that would 
look down on this kind of a thing. I, I think that maybe they're missing the point. Like, we're just trying to have a good time and have other people have a good time. Well, I'll be honest with you. The way I see it is if a band is going to pull off something like costumes. Uniforms. <laughs> Uniforms. <laughs> uniforms. Interview over. <laughs> yeah. Bye. If a band's going to pull off uniforms, they better be sounding good. But if you sound good and you look good, then it's just added. Awesome. Pleasure. Added this. Pleasure. Yeah. Nice. Awesome pleasure. Let's talk about the album a little bit. Um, just came out. What are you guys hoping for? Uh, I think Trevor summed it up best that we want the, the Nobel Prize for rock and roll, <laughs> which doesn't exist yet, but... Um, they will make it for us, We have hope. We have lofty <laughs> goals, I guess, so... World domination? I don't know. There, are, We definitely have a list of slightly embarrassing things that we want to hit, but uh, I don't know. Basically, get out there, play shows, be a better band, do, like, outrageous things, make interesting videos, and... Well, that's, have fun. I mean, that's the ultimate goal. That's coming up, right? You guys are uh, soon to put out uh, some videos for this uh, upcoming album. Is there anything we can look forward to? Yes. In fact, right now you can go to our YouTube channel and see the video we made for Nightlife starring Joe Flaherty from SCTV and Freaks and Geeks, um, reprising his SCTV character Count Floyd for us. He came. He left his sunny home in Los Angeles and came to Edmonton in December and shot a video with us. So That's amazing. you can go check that out. It's the Nightlife video starring Joe Flaherty on the Wet Secrets YouTube channel. Well, you've got an incredibly <laughs> talented filmmaker amongst you. So That's does right. that uh, does that obviously that that helps with promotion and marketing? Uh, what, we look at it just as a fun opportunity to make another facet of the art right so um the lucky thing is that there's cool crews in edmonton and a lot of do-it-yourself filmmaking so we were able to get this massive crew to come and uh shoot this video over the course of four days with us um so we we sort of did the math and what we did for five bucks in edmonton would have cost like i don't know like two hundred and fifty thousand in la or something so we were really lucky to tap into that DIY filmmaking community that is also really strong here in Calgary through CSIF and M Media and Quick Draw. Um, up in Edmonton, we shot with a bunch of Fava people. So there's a lot of really good independent media art in, in Alberta, and we want to engage with it. Mm. Uh, I, I would imagine it'd be uh, foolish not to when there is such great talent in this province and when you guys obviously seem to be visually minded as well uh, with photo with video it's it's a it's a really nice package for sure people can wanna... buy the album on iTunes or our band camp it's called free candy and it's not free but it is affordable <laughs> but sweet I'm sure yeah. nonetheless the song is called I don't think so and uh, it is it, I guess, is the the bummer track on the uh, not entirely bummer album, but it's sort of about uh, sort of about um, growing old disgracefully, perhaps. Uh, this song has turned out to be my favorite on the album. It still is a pretty fun jam. Discouraging love. 